So uh, we were going to chat with him previous hour. He got a little derailed, but kind enough to uh, to let us know and kind enough to get back to us. His name is John Urschels from the Ravens, uh, played at Penn State, offensive lineman, and he's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. John, how are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? We right. are doing well. fine. Where, where did you get the um, the – ideas for your player tribune articles of so those who don't know john writes for the player tribune i forgot what the title is they gave you but it's an impressive one uh, and it's mostly around math and how it how it i don't know help explain some of the things in sports i enjoy it some people not, might, might not get it but i enjoy it where'd you come up with the idea to do this in sports uh you know the player tribune reached out to me you know they they really want to give players a voice and they said I have carte blanche to write about whatever I'd like, and that's something I enjoy. I enjoy having this medium to express myself and express my voice. Now, now but was it Jeter who reached out, or did he have <laughs> one of his lackeys do it? Did Derek take the time to call you here, John? You know, Derek did not give me a phone call. I have met Derek uh-huh. in New York, but I have not. I did not get a phone call from Derek, so he did not recruit me directly. Well, he got recruited by one of the assistants. Gotcha. Well, here's here's the article that I'm referring to. You said, I wrote an article. This is on your Twitter, by the way, at John C. Urschel. Um, I wrote an article comparing the NFL mean reversion to other sports and discuss its implications on labor relations. What did you find out from doing this mean reversion in sports? So really what I was looking at is this whole concept that this hard salary cap we have in the NFL, that we need these things so that our sport can have parity and all the teams can be competitive and can compete with each other. Yes. And what I analyzed is, well, you know, naturally the NFL is going to have more randomness just because it's a smaller sample size. But if you look at how teams do from year to year, whether going towards the mean or away from the mean, it really looks about the same for all the sports and even the distribution of wins and losses looks about the same for all the sports once you adjust for variance. And this is similar to sports which have the soft salary caps like Major League Baseball. So what you're saying then is something interesting to think about. So so you think football could have a soft cap? Because that's the one thing that you you complain about. And this is from a this is a this is now a labor relations question. The NFL is the only sport that doesn't have guaranteed contracts and guys are essentially at will employees, whereas in baseball and basketball, you sign on the dotted line, you get it. But the reason you have to do that in football is because there is a hard salary cap. You think there's an argument for the opposite in football? I think there's no reason why we shouldn't have a soft salary cap. The argument against it is that it will somehow shift the competitive balance and that, you know, certain teams may have significantly better teams than others. And, you know, my analysis says, well, you know, these other teams that have soft salary caps, their structures look very similar to ours. You mean so I'm not sure you mean, that do you mean they're bit, creating you mean, a soft salary cap will create great problems like perhaps, you know, some of the NFL owners would like people to believe. Gotcha. Um, I mean, I, I would challenge that a little bit here, John. Talking to John Urschel from the Ravens, offensive lineman, Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. I mean, if I'm the the Giants or if I'm the 49ers in the middle of you know Silicon Valley versus, say, the Jaguars who may be uprooted to, to Jacksonville, just in terms of local revenues, there's a big disparity. So, I mean, you would imagine that that would impact the roster. I mean, the ability to sign guys. Not as long as you don't get rid of revenue sharing. Yeah, but I think, if there's a soft cap, there's still ways to circumvent that. True. You don't think so, John? Uh, well, you know, yes, some teams will spend more money on their teams, and therefore they will have slightly better teams. But this doesn't mean that there's going to be a system of have and have nots, like, say, in the EPL. This will shift it slightly, but it will not shift it a great deal. I mean, if you look at baseball, which is this to the extreme, mm-hmm. Their structure of wins and losses and teams dominating versus, you know, doing poorly and their reversion is very much the same as football. It's changed. It, it wasn't like that for a while, but I think you're right. I think the market or yeah, – I, I agree with – baseball's changed in the sense that suddenly the Pirates and the Royals, there's a premium on drafting and developing, whereas back in the day – the Yankees and a few other teams could cut a big check and they were guaranteed 90 wins. I do think baseball's changed quite a bit. I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting concept. 
The fact that you even yeah, think no, about I mean, this is interesting. Something to think about. Yeah. And uh, one of the biggest things to consider is because of the very large rosters that mm-hmm. NFL, the NFL has, I'm not sure that this change in salary cap will have a huge, huge effect in terms of talent per player because it's spread over so many players. Okay. All right. Talking to John Urschel from the Ravens. So the games this weekend, uh, you don't have a dog in the fight. I don't know if you have any relationships with, you know, if you're tight with a, a Brady or any of the players. Uh, it just to, from a sheer football point of view, who do you expect to see in the Super Bowl? Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I'm going mm, I'm going Patriots-Panthers. Taking the Patriots, mm. although, you know, Denver has a very good defense, I've just been impressed just over the years with the Patriots' ability to game plan opponents and win. The way that Tom Brady can control an offense, even when he's not working with much, their offensive line has been shuffled around a lot this year and has had their struggles. And last game, they just decided to come out and pass the ball because, well, I'm not sure they have much faith in their run game. And that's the sort of game planning that I think really helps them win these key games. And then on the other side, Carolina just looks like a powerhouse this year, man. So that's that's an easy pick. Yeah, when you and when whoa, you, yeah, easy yeah, pick. Yeah, okay, yeah, there, John. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The, no, stick to the finances. A lot of variation. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of variance. Yes. Of the two, I think the Panthers is the easiest pick. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, I debate it as well, and the reason that I I think the Panth- Panthers are going to go there simply because they've been the best team in the NFL for most of the season, and usually. Uh, that consistency, especially when you don't have major injuries, uh, tend to tend to carry out once you get to the postseason. But you had to have some questions when they gave up a huge lead uh, to the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, I thought they were going to score 60 points in that game last weekend, and they took their foot off the gas. You, if you're if you're an offensive lineman, if you are in like like you are, or you are a a, a, um, a defensive lineman, and you see your team getting non-aggressive, how do you combat that? Because I feel like that's the issue, and that's the question mark I still have for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, you know, as an offensive lineman, there's not much to do about the play calling. I mean, you just get the plays that you get. But it's just creating the line of scrimmage four yards downfield and just dominating your opponent in the run game, protecting well in the pass game. And, yes, they let Seattle get back in it a little bit. But at the same time, I think they're very much in control of the game. Yeah. So – you know, they were playing just, you know, safe football. They just wanted to win the game, move on. And, you know, I understand that. It's kind of, you know, it's a tough dilemma how to play when you have the lead. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to see the end already there when you had such a dominant half. Now, you you teamed up with Gillette. We had a Roger Saffold on last week, and, and I forgot what his dance was, but I just watched your dance. It's pretty bad, John. I mean, <laughs> what, what are you doing with Gillette and New Fusion Pro Shield? Wait, so you mean like pretty bad? Is that like bad like a no, good? Not bad as in awful. Not bad as in cool. Not bad, bad as in trendy or, you know, uh, awful. Bad as in hip because I'm pretty no, sure of just three guys. Bad in the play. very literal, uh, most uh, uh, widely used definition of the word. Bad now, as in that, bad. Now, was it bad intentionally? Because if that was the case, then it was cool and then bad in the good sense. Maybe. I'm, I'm just letting you know that. Of the three offensive linemen, my moves are best. I've done the mathematical analysis, and it is so. And what's going on with Gillette is they have a new razor, the Fusion Pro Shield, and it's supposed to protect your face from razor burn, just like offensive linemen protect and shield the quarterback from defensive linemen. So the idea is they want to do an ad campaign with offensive linemen, which you never really see. It's true. I think it's pretty awesome. Give us a chance to shine and give us a chance to dance. Yeah, the last yeah. time you saw offensive linemen was Dan Marino giving them isotoners. Yeah, how cheap was that, yeah, that was back in the cheap. day? Yeah. Come on. Thank, I love Dan, but thank, Dan, thanks, step it up. Thanks man. for letting me get 5,000 yards behind you guys. Yeah, uh, there's a $30 <laughs> pair of gloves. <laughs> Some gloves. <laughs> so you can, you can find this. You can hashtag these also. It's shield, uh, hashtag shield move. Uh, if you want to put your own dances on Twitter. I'm just messing with you, John. I, I appreciate your mind, maybe not your moves. Just just give it time. They will grow on <laughs> It'll you. sink into me. <laughs> John, good chat, man. Keep doing your thing, buddy. And, uh, you know, let's get a direct contact to Jeter next time, will you? Let's go. Come on. All right. All right? Be good, John. All right.